Hey everyone, we got another question that came in today. Yeah, oi, there it is. Dear Emma and Kevin, how does plant life work? Ah, oh, how does plant life work? Well, we've got a diagram here to mm -hmm. show what uh, it looks like. Here you go. So go ahead and explain it. So first we're gonna explain the plant's life cycle and then we will explain how they get their water and nutrients and how they grow. So first it starts as a little wee seed. <laughs> I know the wee is pretty funny. And then the, the seed starts to crack. And then once it, it's done with the cracking, it grows roots. Then it can grow into a seedling with small little leaves and then it can get all of its food and nutrients from for photosynthesis. And then they grow bigger with more leaves and a longer stem. And then they, they can get more of their nutrients and they can make car, mix carbon dioxide and water to make a sugar they eat called glucose. Glucose. Yeah, yeah glucose. And cool. then it turns into, and then it has a flower bud. Then the flower, then the, then you see those little leaves around the flower bud? That's, those are called ovules. It, it helps, they help protect the flower as it develops. And then the flower opens and then it gets pollinated. Well, the flower is an adult, but then when it gets pollinated, the and fruit forms, and then when the other animals eat it, they, lay, they leave out the seed and the seeds could grow into another plant again. Yeah. So we're gonna tell now we're gonna tell you how they how they get their water all their water and nutrients. So the roots job is to give them all the nutrients and their water when when people water the plant. Mm. Then water travels through the roots into the plant. Then they and they and they breathe and they freshen the air with oxygen and then we can breathe in the oxygen that they put out and then we breathe out <sighs> what the plants put in ah amazing mm -hmm. and so it's almost like they're recycling what we use and we use what they recycle right mm -hmm. right it's important that plants give us all the oxygen some plants are becoming endangered yeah look like, at all these plants though there's so many plants Grass is not endangered. Oh my grass is not in, definitely not endangered. I know. There's so much captivity with grass. How about let's show some of the plants that we have in our backyard? Oh yeah. Alright, let's I, go see. And I know some of the endangered plants, like a picture plant. Okay. So let's go see what plants we have uh, to see. Okay, what's the first plant that you want to show? Rosebush, okay. Be careful, this has thorns. What are the thorns for? The thorns are for protecting them so they can live and get more water and glucose. Ah, glucose. Glucose, they can be glucose. <laughs> What is this? I don't know, but this was supposed to grow like a pretty pink flower and it did, but now all the pink flowers are gone. Ah. And they Let's go over to the food, the food ones. Let's go over here. These are interesting. All right, so what do we have here? So, we have some plants around in this garden. See the leaves of, See the leaves on this plant? It has like little spikes. It could really hurt. Oh. And it's pretty fuzzy over here to protect them from the cold. And not a lot of animals like to eat it with all this fuzz. Oh, so we, those are also for protection, aren't they? Mm-hmm. We have a little praying mantis friend, and it's not any somewhere around here. Hmm. Let's go look for him. What about this? This is an interesting one, too. Oh, the aloe vera? Mm hmm So the aloe vera is like a spike, is like a spiky plant that also uses these spiky spikes to protect itself. But it's really helpful, too. It what can you use it for? Medicine. When, when you have a fever, you eat the gel inside. It is pretty gross. Ah, oh, okay. 
Well, you can also use it to as like a topical lotion, right? Yeah, you can even use it for bug bites and sunburns. Right. Ah, oh, look at these. These are so vibrant. Vibrant? Vibrant. Oh, vibrant. What does vibrant mean? I don't know. It means colorful and oh, lively. Yeah. yeah. And right. there's one prop. There's another. There's a problem in our garden. What? You see this? This is called dill. Mm, and dill. a lot. And it's been eaten a lot. Mm. So would you say that there are predators that are eating these? Yeah, like inchworms and cabbage worms. There's so many slugs, worms. It's like everything loves to. It's like everything loves to eat plants. Oh, okay. But it's okay for butterflies to lay their eggs there with caterpillars, and we love butterflies. Okay. So, is there any other plants you want to show, or is that it? No. Okay. There's That's it. More. Th no. Oh, there's more. Okay. So this is my baby sequoia tree. It's almost growing. Sequoia trees are the biggest are the biggest plant in the world. Wow, that's and not a big plant, but it will be, right? Yeah, soon it will, but it would take a long time that we would all die that that time, maybe. Hmm. And look at all these ants. Did you know that they even use plants as their energy source to eat? Wow. They could eat anything. They're omnivores. They are even. They are also scavengers, which means they use they eat dead things for meals. There's so much life back here. I know, and there's a lizard over there's there. There's a lizard over there. <laughs> Cute. Okay. All right. There's so many things in plant life, and that's not all. Check out the grass. Check out the grass. Okay. The grass needs a little warmth, but they actually. <laughs> Okay. They're, they're probably the smallest plant of all. I don't think so. They're pretty big compared to some plants. Well, yeah, but they are probably the smallest plant. Uh. And probably it might be this. I don't know what this is called. We never know. Scientists are still studying to see which one is the smallest plant in the world. Mm. The Rafflesia is the is the is the largest flower in the world. Mm. It smells like a it's. It's about the size of an armchair and smells like a dead animal. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> it's too stinky. The Rafflesia grows in rainforest. Over the world's ha half of the species of plants and animals live in rainforests. Many are endangered because rainforests are being cleared for land. We have to help the Rafflesia. Mm. The Rafflesia is one of the most endangered plants endangered plants of all. Oh. There's another endangered plant, which is the picture plant. The picture plant is carnivorous. Picture, picture. I said that. The picture plant is carnivorous, which means they use animals for food. It grows near swamps. But people have been clearing their land for, for homes, for, for, for stores, home, for farms, homes, and businesses. Chemicals used to kill weeds or pests could harm the, gr the green picture plant too. Now the plant is endangered, which is a bad thing. Maybe if we, if maybe if we, maybe for, our, for a pet, we can adopt an endangered plant online. Mm, good idea. So we can save their species and then we learn about them. Mm. What kind, awesome. of, what kind of plants would you like to get? Well, there are so many things about plant life, and we're still not done. The leaves help them give them all the sun that they need. The leaves help them. The leaves help make the, their sunlight into the nutrients and food that they eat for photosynthesis. Cool. Well, I guess that's all. That's all for now. All right. It's time to go. Bye. Thanks for teaching about plant life. See ya. And if you want more learning adventures, you can visit our website. Just to visit www.brainpopke.com. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Time to go.